If you look through their gates, they have a mural of Ace Ventura painted on the wall. My friends, it's your old pal Jordan the Lion. How are you all doing today? I hope you said well. Today we are in Miami Beach, Florida, and we are gonna have a great day. We are actually gonna do a filming location I have always wanted to see. One of my favorite movies, Jim Carrey, Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. This is such an off the wall comedy. I'm so glad that something like this exists because when I was a kid I was watching living color and i love jim carrey on there and when he had his own movie and he was the star of and everything i mean i just couldn't believe how awesome he was and i still love this movie to this day when i was watching this getting ready and looking for locate i've been looking for locations for this for about three years making pins and notes from different uh chat groups and different things people noting where you know buildings were and everything and i finally feel like i have enough that we can do a good video so let's go do it days with jordan the lion begins right now. So our actual first shots are of Ace walking up this sidewalk. Now they have a bunch of tables because there's restaurants here, but he's actually walking his package that he's delivering right up, coming our way, right through here. And he's smashing it along the sides of the rails and everything and kicking it along the sidewalk. That's actually happening all along here. He's making that whole walk right here. Smashing it. I don't see the telephone pole, but he's walking through here smashes it along maybe it was uh maybe that was the tree that he's hitting remember he grabs that package as he's coming along here sliding it up along those i love that part when he's just scraping the box right up against this rail right here now what's kind of strange is that when he's walking he's starting over here that's where the camera picks him up he's going along this way with the package, smashing it into the stuff all along the way. And then it cuts to the apartment that he goes to, but the apartment that he goes to, even though he's walking that way, is actually the tides right here. And when I was walking over here, I passed by this restaurant on the corner, the Carlisle, and I noticed they were wearing shirts from the bird cage, which reminded me that that was in the bird cage. So actually take a look at this, what all's on this strip. So that was in the movie, The Bird Cage with Nathan Lane and Robin Williams, that was in Something About Mary, and then this was Ace Ventura Pet Detective, this and this. Kind of cool. See, there's Robin Williams from The Bird Cage. Thanks. You're welcome. So we're just going to walk a building away. Looks like they're doing a little bit of construction on it, so they have a fence up, but you can still see the homeless guy is sitting over there, right on that edge when Ace walks up with the package. Then he ends up going to that door right there, gets up to the door and then throws the whole package like behind him. Ends up landing like right down here. So then he comes and picks it up from the ground again. Walks it up to the front door and we see him. This is a great scene because this is, in the movie, this was a lot filthier, a lot dirtier. You could even see some of the lettering was gone from the name in the movie. 
But this is that great scene where he's stealing the dog back from Randall Tex Cobb. And I read that they said when Tex showed up to the set that day, he was a boxer, like he was a legit tough guy. He, when he showed up to set that day, he had those black eyes. So they just said, well, uh, just leave him. Like, don't cover him up with makeup, just leave it. It's kind of good for the, for the movie. So that scene would have happened, I guess it would have been 311 if they actually did film it inside of here. He knocks on that door and has that box that he's just broken into, you know, bits. It's like the whole box, especially the, the walk down the hallway to the apartment, he's kicking it and throwing it over his head and everything. And then the guy says, well, sounds like it's broken. Oh, well then just fill out this form. And while the guy's filling out the form, that's when Ace swaps the dog for the stuffed dog that he has in his chest. And then he comes running out of this building right here. So here's where we see Ace walking towards us with the dog sticking out of the top of his shirt. He's made his getaway right before Tex Cobb is chasing him out here to the corner. Contest, there must be a loser. Me who? her. So as he's walking towards us, you can actually see the end of Ace's car hanging out right here. Contest, there must be a loser. So that's when he hops in the car with the dog right there and his car starts getting completely smashed. It gets flooded. We'll just wait a few seconds. Ah! Or we can try it now. Ah! You can actually see different parts of this. Like right here when Tex Cobb is smashing out the back window, you can see that. And that. So Ace is in the car right here. He <laughs> can't get the car started, of course. It's a lie! It's a lie! Then finally he gets it going and he takes off straight down this way with Randall Tex Cobb hanging off the back of his car. <laughs> Until Ace finally bites his hand <laughs> and uh and he comes flying off the back and i'll show you where he flies off the back it's crazy that you can see so much of this from the movie in different spots it all happens kind of fast but definitely right there so a little movie magic instead of going down that way where i showed you in reality they actually end up going out the way we came and ace makes a right out there obviously they wouldn't have had this barricade here because it's a one-way street and everything but they come out right here tex cobb goes flying off right here and then ace's car takes off down that way That's when you get the absolutely classic line when Jim Carrey's looking in his side view mirror and says, Warning, assholes are closer than they appear. Loving this movie as much as I do, I honestly can't imagine it be for anyone other than Jim Carrey, but actually the movie was originally offered to Rick Moranis, if you can believe that. He just had scheduling conflicts and couldn't make it. All right, here's our cameo theater sign, which is actually a restaurant, which lets you know if you remember the movie, Ace comes flying around this corner to come home. So he comes flying around there, racing towards us, and ends up sliding right into the parking spot that I'm standing in right here. So that's where he would have pulled up and his big blue car would have been right there. So Ace would have came in here through that entrance, coming the same way we are. He's walking through here and picks up that palm frond. B 
because he doesn't want Mr. Shigadance to see him walking through. And they've changed the windows, but he's actually walking past here, bouncing. <laughs> and then goes on through these doors. Actually, same doors. Different color, but same doors. And there's the staircase that he goes up for his apartment upstairs. So he comes in right there. Comes all the way up these steps. And then Mr. Shigadance meets him up here. You know what's kind of funny is that uh, the name for the landlord came from Jim Carrey's childhood apartment building. So he would have walked right up this route. Pretty freaking cool. And then of course he's accused of having animals up there to which he does his secret key shake. All the animals hide and he opens up the door and there's no animals. Yes, Satan? Go ahead, snoop around. And then when he closes the door, they all attack him. Would have been that apartment. So just to let you know so far, all the locations we've done have been in Miami Beach, all within walking distance, just like five or six minutes away from each other. So right here we have our next scene when Ace is on to trying to capture that white bird that the rich guy lost that's worth the $20,000. He's on the roof of this building right up here. He goes after the, goes to get the bird, falls off the roof. <laughs> up laying in the trash can which unfortunately the dumpster would not have is not actually there that's actually the walkway but you can tell this was definitely the spot this would have had pink stripes up it at the time but all the windows and everything else match up so our next shot you don't see this angle but this is the way Ace is driving towards the police station. I'll flip it around for you. So we have our shot here. This is actually the uh, University of St. Augustine in Coral Gables, the health and sciences building. You see Ace is driving all crazy, coming towards us the same way we drove in. And there's a cop car of a couple of cops right there that see him. and he drives towards us. Real quick scene, and does his spin move in the car and ends up parking the car right here. You can actually see the entrance of the building and everything right there in the movie. Just a quick scene, this is actually the police station. This is when he comes to talk to Tone Loke. <laughs> he wants to know who's working the snowflake case and Tone Loke doesn't want to tell him anything so that's when Ace has to play dirty and start talking out of his butt. Excuse me, I'd like to ask you a few questions. <laughs> Let me ask you a few questions. By the way, do you have a mint by chance? Actually crazy story was that when they made this movie, Tone Loke was like the biggest name attached to the movie at the time. He was like the biggest star of the time. Great theme song to this movie too, by the way. They said the theme song was inspired by Peter Gunn, but that Jim Carrey actually wanted more of like a thrash metal feel to it. We have arrived at our next location. It's a nature walk just to get to this place. So admission here is $25 to do this filming location. This is the rich benefactor who Ace has realized has one of those championship rings and he wants to come to this party to see if the guy is missing the stone from his ring. All right, I'm We're gonna have to talk through this guy's photo shoot, but we see this shot, it's a night shot, and we see a bunch of cars coming up along this road. Get a little distant shot. This is where Jim Carrey and 
Courtney Cox are showing up for the rich gala. So we see them getting out right here. You can see that in the background and even those Venetian style buoys. I'm really going out on a limb here, Ventura. They come walking up here. They're setting up for a wedding up here, but we see them walking up here. Camp social events are strictly A-list. Gee, Chuck, the date started off good. And then they walk over to the door. Just before we got to the party, she seemed to tense up. It's a different doorway and the interiors were not used here, but something else was. So we see Ace go to the bathroom because he claims he had some bad pate that it might come out looking better than the way it went in. He goes out of the bathroom window and ends up right down here. He does his little Mission Impossible scaling of the, the little fence right there, which was a different one at the time. But he hops over it, scoots all the way down, and then hops back over. But you know, I'm noticing one thing. Check this out. When he goes to jump onto the wall and everything over there, it actually kind of comes out and is extended in the movie. So it must have been a fake or they've changed it since. Because if you look in the movie, like right about here, that whole section of this wall and everything, the color changes to it. And then he jumps on and, you know, he's grabbing onto the things right here and scooting across. There's like a trapezoidal one at the top of the one that he is climbing onto and it's not there, so. Looks like they must have made a, like a little fake facade or something right there because even the doorway's different. Remember he's standing there and he swings his arm out to open the doorway. <laughs> and that's when he goes in that door and eventually finds the shark tank. Pretty cool to get to see where good old Tom Ace put on his performance. <laughs> so right here you can see old Greenwich Studios but in the movie, it's the Bogart soundstage where Dan Marino is doing his commercial. When Ace is coming, he comes flying in his car up here around this corner and you can actually see that road sign up there. We see the guys kidnapping Dan Marino. Their car is parked right here. They're bringing him out through this door right there. And then Ace comes flying around this corner Security are running out this door after the two guys that kidnapped Dan Marino. Now check this out, this is kind of cool. If you look through their gates, they have a mural of Ace Ventura painted on the wall. So after Ace has rounded the corner, he starts chasing the guys who kidnapped Dan Marino and we get a shot looking at him in his car going, excuse me, gentlemen, pet detective. So when Ace is driving towards us, you kind of have that view. Excuse me, gentlemen, pet detective. We hid from the rain for a while, but it did eventually show up. And this is our Shady Acres nut house that he talks her into bringing him out to and and says, you gotta commit me. You have to commit me. We get a shot up here. Finkel escaped from Shady Acres in Tampa. They Ace saying that Finkel escaped from a mental hospital in Tampa, and it says Shady Acres right up there. The reason they chose that as the name is because the, that, the director's last name was Shadyac. So it was Shady Acres minus the R-E-S was his actual last name. So that's what they called it. We still have some of his stuff. Ace, they're not just gonna let us waltz in and look around. Finkel escaped from there and left some of his stuff 
I want to go look around. She says, Ace, they're not going to just let you go in there and look around. He goes, I know. That's why I'm the master of disguise. I know. It's a good thing I'm a master of disguise. And guess what? This is actually open, so if I go pay $10, I can go walk around over there where Ace was doing his football plays. And I'm gonna do it. Let's go. All right, I just paid the $10 to come in here. Take a look at this. So here we have the shot where the doctor and Courtney Cox are walking towards us and she's saying, you know, your brother won't be the first professional athlete that we've had here. We understand the stresses that they go through. Is that right? Yes, we're very sensitive to the emotional stress that athletes have to endure. I'm open, I'm open. And you see Ace <laughs> go running from this side. I'm open, I'm open. And you see after they talk for a little bit longer then he goes over here. He goes running back over there again. I think your brother will fit in nicely here. Over here! And then the mech next matchup shot is right over here. When he's doing the Rover 51! Rover 51! Ray 51! Ray 51! Hut! Hut! Hike! Hut! Hut! He seems to have some difficulty letting go of the game. And he jumps over the bushes that used to be there. There was a whole line of bushes that went up along this side. The way you can tell is because you can see this off to the side and you can tell that that bends in the background. Hut, hut. So it was definitely right here. They've gotten rid of the shrubbery on that side and also the same place over here. Oh, and then, of course, we have his celebratory dance. Can't forget that. We see him celebrating right over here because you can see that archway in the background while he's dancing with all the people in the background <laughs> after he scored his touchdown. Has he had a long history of mental illness? All right, off to our last location of the day. This one is way out of the way compared to the others, so it's way north. We're headed to the old Joe Robbie Stadium. There it is ahead of us. Now it's called the Hard Rock. I'll thank you to stay out of my personal affairs. You're a weird guy, Ace. Weird guy. It'll be hard as heck to do any matchups here because the whole stadium looks totally different than when they filmed. So in the infinite friendliness of the NFL, they wouldn't allow me even to be past this gate to get a photo of the old Joe Robbie. We'll have to do it from here. This is where Snowflake, the mascot of the Dolphins, ends up getting stolen in Ace Ventura Pet Detective, and that's why they end up hiring Ace, and they're trying to get this Dolphin back because they're having a Super Bowl game, and they know that all the players are highly, highly superstitious, so they want to find out where this Dolphin is, so they hire Ace, and he comes in, starts looking around the tank, I'm not back in five minutes. Just wait longer. And finds that jewel that's out of a 1984 championship ring. So he's now on the mission to find out whose ring is missing that jewel. So of course at the end he finds out it's Ray Finkel and Ray Finkel has this whole grudge against Dan Marino. But at the very end of the movie, Ace has found Snowflake, saved Dan Marino, and he's basically trying to still capture that one white bird and the mascot shoes it away. Idiot! So he ends up getting into a fight with the mascot at the very end of the movie. in total classic Ace Ventura form. I hope you guys all enjoyed this vlog. Thank you for watching. Miami is a very cool city to explore, especially through these filming locations. If it's your first time here, please subscribe, please hit the like button, and ring that bell for notifications. We'll see you all next time. Have a great night, and goodbye.